All right, guys. So I've been playing Undisputed. I thought I'd revisit Fight Night Round 4. I played Fight Night, um, what is it, Champion so many times. I thought I'd revisit this one. I haven't played this one in such a long time. But let's do some uh, fighting. I'm going to go with Big George versus Tyson. See if we can take down Tyson. See if I remember these controllers. Hi, everybody. So glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to Boardwalk Hall and the famed Atlantic City Boardwalk in southern New Jersey for our main event. Ten rounds of heavyweight action between George Foreman and Iron Mike Tyson. George Foreman's got his eye on the prize. He has complete focus on his ring walk here. Mike Tyson's making his way to the ring with a determined giddy-up in his step. All right, guys, I haven't played this in a long Round while. Let's see how it goes. Is now underway. All okay. the talk is done. It is simply time to fight. Wow, two of the best power-punching heavyweights of any generation now. Iron Mike Tyson facing off against Big George Foreman. Give me something to look for. How do you oh. distribute your power? That's what I'm going to give you. And what is effective in that situation with that particular guy? George Foreman has a really good uppercut. Tyson coming in the shorter guy, he is vulnerable to that punch. Oh, that's good stuff. Fire is right back with one of his own. And good Tyson's work by quick. George Foreman. Very accurate work. Three punch combination serves him well. Both men trading hooks. Oh, rocked him with that one. Can't believe I remember how to play this, funny enough. Nice block that time. It was intended to the head. Targets a counter overhand right. What happened to the get to know you? They're getting to know each other real quick here. Unbelievable. I feel like I'm at a fancy restaurant and we've already had four courses and the chef came out and said, hey, don't be full yet. You got eight more to go. Teddy, let's size up George Foreman. And I suppose we would start with that, the size. <laughs> the size is one of his great strengths. And usually, not always, but usually he knows how to use that size. You know, his stand, to be set on his feet at a certain distance. And, you know, you think of the power punches with George, you know, the uppercut, the left hook, the looping right hand. But you know what? He has a really solid sledgehammer left jab. Ooh. And Tyson with a block punch. Oh, and he comes back with an uppercut there after getting hit. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Good body shot. Foreman's commitment to being judicious. Yeah, guys, I had to cut the music out because there's going to be a ton of copyrights really for that. worked out well there. The punch good, stats proven. Good doing some good damage.
Here we go. Rap Good counter punch. No, he missed that right. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by George Foreman. Oh, that's that was a good shot. A clean, big hook to the head by George Foreman. Oh. Oh, man. Foreman's proving to be elusive. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Mike Tyson. Oh. You think back to George Foreman and his early days, and I think one of the visions that most fans remember is holding that tiny little American flag in the Mexico City Olympic Games in 1968 after claiming gold. You know, that's an interesting point because Foreman's not known as a guy with great personality. You know, he's a guy who's a disdainful looking guy. You know, he's a guy that kind of reminds you almost of a sunny listener. He tries to intimidate you. He does intimidate you with his power, with his size. But at that moment, he showed that he has personality that is inside him. Back and forth exchange. He just missed that shot up top. Mike Tyson blocking that punch. Oh, should have count. Oh, there we go. Holy cow. Mike Tyson's almost out of it there. He was stunned. Teddy, he may go down just by stumbling the way he's bumbling around this ring. Well, he's got to stop moving. Actually, you know. Oh! Robbed him. Mike Tyson's on the canvas. He went down hard there. One, two, three, four. So he goes down, but able to get up to his feet. Teddy, what should he be thinking about now? Well, right now, just surviving. But if he survives, then he better figure out why he was put on the floor. Good block by Tyson. Clean shot, returning fire. Well done by George Foreman. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. That straight right, unable to connect. End of the round. A round in which a knockdown was scored. Now, Teddy, if you're the Doing trainer a lot of damage, in the corner of the guy scoring the knockdown, what are some of the things you want to remind him of? You want to remind him how he got there because a lot of times there's a tendency to just remember the punch that put him there. He dressed him up. He set that punch up. Don't think about just the punch that landed. Think about the setup punches. You know, he did a very nice job of finishing up that. He put the third punch in there and landed the combination. Foreman's doing a good job of putting his punches oh, together. Oh, he could have caught me right there. Really good. got to be wondering, how do I stop this? Well, right now, hey, you, you made a good point there because right now his opponent is wondering too much. You know, he's just busy blocking the punches, wondering about the combinations. He's not getting off. Mike Tyson's starting to bleed from the nose. Oh, oh, there we go. There you go. Oh, that uppercut got him badly. Well off the mark by Tyson. Nice strike after catching one by George Foreman. Mike Tyson, youngest heavyweight champion ever, claiming all three belts, unifying the title, and then, of course, making a ragdoll out of Michael Spinks. How important is that to his legacy? Everything. I mean, he came up with the man, his mentor, Customato, who had the prior youngest heavyweight champ of all time. That was Floyd Patterson. He wanted to break that record. He planned on, he lived to break that record. Ooh. 
Mike Tyson's got to know that the answer is to go to the body against this faster fighter, but I'm not seeing him do it. Well, that's part of the talent is knowing. Oh, that was a good straight right. This there we go. This is going to take some guts to get up from this. Once again, he goes down. I think he's done. That's it's it. Over. Big Look George. This Big George Foreman's going to be partying tonight. A knockout victory. George Foreman's your winner by knockout, Teddy. Well, we came in wondering whether or not his opponent had a good chin. We found out. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time. Ring Let's see side. what else we could do here. Let's see what our next fight could be. We don't have too many fighters in here. Um, let's see any legends we got. Ooh, we got a wealth weight. Victor Ortiz. I forgot Victor Ortiz is in here. Hearns. Wow. By Pacquiao. Uh, Ricky Hayden. <laughs> Ricky Hayden he destroyed. Might go Hearns. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Ray Leonard. Let's go Ray Leonard because he's 91. I am joining um, Undisputed. Uh, this feels a little bit more fluent with the punches, though. I don't know. It is a lot harder to knock somebody out in Undisputed. So they kind of made it more on the realistic side, I would say. But there's a lot of problems still with the game. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. And welcome to a sold-out boardwalk hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey for tonight's main event. 10 rounds of welterweight action between Manny Pacquiao and Sugar Ray Leonard. Manny Pacquiao is coming down to the ring right now and he does so with a certain gamesmanship, putting forth that attitude to his opponent, telling him, I'm the man and I know it. Sugar Ray Leonard's ring walk, something special in the air, you can just sense it out of him. Three minutes. Oh, let's see how this goes. Fight. How do you think Pacquiao should approach things here, Teddy, knowing that he's the shorter man? Not to get over anxious, because right away somebody's going to say, well, Pacquiao's going to look to force himself in. If you force yourself in, then the taller man can take advantage of those assets. Be patient and gradually work your way in. Sugar Ray Leonard's got a way of just getting away from that punch. Oh. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. I feel like I was never going back even Couldn't back in the day. The oh. Target with that straight right. Showing you some Paco definitely got the shorter arms. up top now he goes there again I think we'd have to go to the body more on him targeting the hooks on each man good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault Sugar Ray Leonard has so many strengths as a fighter. Is there a weakness? Look, everybody has a kryptonite. You know, I, I mean, even Superman, you know, he, I mean, has something 
that you could get to. Not too many with Sugar Ray Leonard, but if there was one, and I'm nitpicking a little bit. And he's getting blasted he's with that. Hands a little low. You know, he depends on that sense of anticipation. He's got good technique, great, great speed. But with the hands down, if you get lucky enough, or if you get good enough to time him, every once in a while with that left hand low, you can time him clean. Time him with the right hand. Oh, that's good stuff. Fire it right back with one of his own. Good work by Sugar Ray Leonard. Good defense just covering up down low. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Protecting his head well with his guard. End of the round here, and as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was, and you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where right, I can't tie myself out at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remembered. He missed with that headshot. Sugar Ray showing defense, able to block that punch. Good counter punching there with the overhand right. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. That punch nowhere close. Getting a lot of body work on him. It's just hard to hit him you know, in the head, though. We get so caught up in talking about our sports celebrities here in North America, the Michael Jordans and the Wayne Gretzkys and the Tom Brady's. But I'm not sure there's a person alive who's more famous in their native country than Manny Pacquiao is in the Philippines. So he is, and he goes way beyond the sport. He's the fabric of the society there. He's a guy that young people young men aspire to become like. If Manny Pacquiao can make it, we can make it. That's just running away. Halfway through round number two. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Really on target there with a three punch combination. Now, this is just beautiful to watch. Watch how he just links one to the next, Teddy. A beautiful sequence, almost like musical notes being played. Well, exactly. It's a nice tune because it just follows. One, as you said, follows the other. Nice and smooth. Very good, steady double jab there. with that headshot. Staying away from those headshots with his Oh, I missed my opportunity top. right there. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. of the talk. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. Teddy, how good is his left hand in terms of being a power punch? Well, that is a cut? punch that he can turn into. He can turn that back foot, that anchor foot, he can turn that back into it. He can really generate yeah, what a this lot is, of play. pop. Stamina recovery. Yeah. Okay, so... And round number three is underway. Mm. 
The tactical game paying off. You can see the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tentativeness now in him because he's afraid to let anything go because when he misses, bang, he gets caught. He's winning the fight to me based on his overall speed. He's just the faster, quicker fighter, and it's making it so that he's able to employ his ways and get the best of his opponent. Oh, he has that he just, physical asset, no doubt about it. He's hiding. He don't you can see it. Oh, that was but a good he one. has to be careful that he doesn't get carried away. He doesn't get reckless with that speed. Targeting that head with the combination punching. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. He has taken a lot of punishment here. Well, the special fighters find a way, even when it's desperate like this, to survive. He's got to find that way right now. <laughs> Missed targeted. Punch there. I don't want to fight. SRL getting rid of that punch. Sugar Ray Leonard's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. 60 seconds to go. Man in Pacquiao with T Rex arms. Toe Come on. To toe war. Oh, what a great round. Well-placed, well-timed combo up top. Sizzling hand speed we saw moments ago. Heck of a combination, but uh, pretty easy to get it off when you're that fast. Yeah, it is. And what it causes, too, is besides us saying, ooh, that we see those quick hands and the judges, you know, marking it down. Also, it makes the opponent keep his hands in his pocket. He's afraid to move his hands because the other guy's so much faster. A well-placed, gutsy uppercut after being tagged. Takes one, gives one. The right hand scores well. Last 10 seconds of round number three. Pretty good, good fight so far. In the last round, swelling on Manny Pacquiao. Well, if you go into an ice cream parlor all the time, you know what? You're going to get fat. If you're a fighter who's going to walk in, you're going to get swollen. Here we go with the fourth round. Manny Pacquiao has got to deal with a cut on his cheek right now. The good news is it's below the eye, but still, it could get nasty as the fight progresses. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Sugar Ray Leonard's learning a lesson here that you don't want to learn, and that is no head movement means you're going to take shots to the head. Well, Customato used to tell me, if you don't move your head, guess what? The other guy will move it for you. Right now, the other guy is moving his head for him. Painfully so. Oh, and they decide to trade there. Needs to improve that accuracy. Miss with the headshot. Takes one, but gets one. Good work by Sugar Ray Leonard. It's a pretty good fight so far. Sugar Ray Leonard's nose is starting to bleed. You get the sense that they know no other way how to fight. They are going at it, back and forth, toe to toe, punch for punch. Lands the counter. Oh, rock me. Caught me pretty good with that counter. Good combination to the head. 
Oh. That straight right, unable to connect. He's just not concentrating on the body as a target here, Teddy. No, and, you know, you wouldn't mind if he didn't have to. In other words, it all depends on the scenario. This scenario says that he should be going to the body, and he should recognize that. And that's part of the talent of a fighter, recognition, that you have to recognize where the opportunities are. Nice strike after catching one by Manny Pacquiao. Off target with that hook. And he scores with a three-punch combo. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Throws a counterpunch there. Oh. Right back to it to the head. Able to dismiss it. As we come to the end of the round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges now, are left with. Let's see if we can with. do something with this. We might lose this one. Oh. Committing upstairs now, he goes there again. Oh, and look at this, Teddy, wasting no time getting to know each other. No, they came right to the center ring, said hello. And that is some good job just striking his target twice in a row by Sugar Ray Leonard. He has walked through bullets, bazookas, and bombs, and he's still standing in there tonight, Teddy. Yeah, this is a testament not just to the physical makeup. I know a lot of people at home are going to say, wow, what kind of bone does he have inside that chin? But it's his mind, too. He's making a choice, just like you do in life and other things. He's making a choice to deal with this. A lot of guys would have given in already. Pacquiao's dealing with the aftermath of being rocked, but yet he hasn't changed anything. He's still sticking with that style. Well, that means panic has not set in. That's a good thing, Joe. He still believes he can get this thing done the way he came here to get it done. Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better. That was off the mark. One minute to go in a round that feels like an all-time classic. Punch for punch, they're meeting each other. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> On. Well, Teddy, you can see quite clearly that that cut is becoming a major problem for him. What does he have to do strategically here to deal with it? Well, there's three lines of defense, so whether you're cut or you're not cut. One is use your legs. Get out of range a little bit. The other is move your head. The other is block. He has to pick one of those defensive strategies, one of those choices, and put it into place. Off the mark. I'm gonna stay away from him. One of How's those fights cut? were at the halfway point. I wouldn't even venture a guess as to what the scorecard should look like. And I don't know that it even matters. All I know is this. Both guys have brought their A games. Both guys have come here to fight tonight. What you know is that it's become a real war of wills. 
two stubborn guys, and they're going to be careful with that cut to argue right to the end. It's got the look of a fight that's going to go the distance. Oh, oh that's got to hurt. Manny Pacquiao stunned, and he is hurt. There he is on the inside, doing well. Well, it's been a while since it, I played this, so. Missed. Isn't landing it. <laughs> Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Manny Pacquiao is being very efficient right here. I mean, he's just picking his shots. His accuracy is through the roof. Well, that's one of the talents, and you hope is a talent, of a top fighter, is his ability to pick his shots, to be calm enough to see the openings. He's seeing everything right now. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. I don't believe I missed that. Love the work by Sugar Ray Leonard. So swiftly able to turn defense into offense. Nice counter punch. And what you're noticing here is his opponent is starting to be a little wary of letting his jab go because every time he jabs, he gets caught. He's keeping his hands too low and he's paying the price. Come on, I had him too. Good clean shot returning fire. He oh, goes down him. in the later stages of this round. He's gonna try to survive it. That was a good shot. One, two, three, four, and five. And Sugar Ray Leonard goes down and now is rising to his feet. And now is gonna show you something. Oh my god, that you don't really? Oh, this is going to get dropped. Close. What he the hell? He may be able to survive the round, but he has gone down now. I can't believe that just happened. like this before as a trainer right now you know what what do you spend time on you want to spend time on telling him why he got in that spot why he got hit but first you got to make sure he revives you got to get him clear-minded you got to get his senses back first and you see he turned defense into offense comes back with the counter punch and that's exactly what he brings to the game he makes you miss he makes you pay and he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. We got a fighter who was knocked down earlier, who, as you can see, is still going about his business the exact same way. Let's turn the tables a bit. If you're opposite that fighter, what do you want to do? What you want to do is just keep going. And, hey, you know that old saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, he's giving it to you. Keep taking it. Keep going to that well until there's no more water. If he's giving you an opportunity to catch him with the same thing, keep doing it. Doing well on the outside. 
He's completely turned his offense off. You can see that he's just in an extreme defensive posture. But still, his opponent is scoring here. Look, the extreme defensive posture is a problem. But if he was moving his head with his hands up, at least there'd be misses there. When his opponent would miss, there'd be an opening to come back where even if you didn't come back, his opponent oh. would be a little worried about sitting in there on you. He'd have to think defense. Right now, he's only thinking offense. This is why we love the sport, Teddy. I mean, this is just back and forth action nonstop. Well, Joe, what special events have happened in history, you remember where you are. Right now, I'm gonna remember where I was during this fight. I'm watching a special epic right in front of me. Glad to be here doing it, too. What a war this is. Oh, he caught me in the body. That was a good body shot. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. Manny able to block that. Another flush shot up top. Job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Sugar Ray Leonard. <laughs> Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. Taking one. Gotta love the work by Sugar Ray Leonard. Here's one for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. Blocks that punch. Come on, open up a little bit. It's got to one up. And now a little combination punching, landing both shots. Sugar Ray Leonard's showing some real guts here. Hey, this fight was not going his way at all, but somehow he has gathered momentum. Yeah, he behaved like a fighter. He got through the tough times, oh. and now guess what? Good times in front of him. <laughs> Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut.
of the round here. And as I glance around ringside and look at the judges, I'm wondering what they're writing down because that was a tough round to score. Yeah, it was. And, you know, it's the kind of round where one guy would be really smart to take a page out of the book of Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, where Leonard stole rounds at the end, where he just clipped off 30 seconds, and that's exactly what the judges remember. Manny Pacquiao's punch stats are really telling a story here right now. I noticed that they've been dropping ever since he got stunned earlier in this fight. Yeah, you know, anybody could keep their punch numbers up when everything is normal. But when you've been stunned, and it's not just stunned, I think physically he's overcoming, but he's been intimidated a little bit. Now is the real testing of the fighter. He's got to put that aside and perform the way he came here to perform. See the counter punch. Yeah, you see the counter punch, but you know what I see? I see a little tendon. Yeah, I went to my body. I'd be done right now. Because he's afraid to let anything go. Because when he misses, bang, it gets caught. And he scores with a three punch combo. blocks that punch. Unable to land that shot. One minute to go in this round. Neither man has decided to slow down at all. Oh boy, what a round. He's a weeble oh, wobble no. in the ring right now. Just wobbling away. One, two jabs. Well, we know he survived uh. earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. One, two, three, four, five. So Manny Pacquiao, he goes down, and now he rises up to move on. Now he's going to have to show that he can be smart. We know he can be tough. We know that he can be exciting. Can he be smart enough to find a way to survive? End of the round. So he scores the knockdown and now heads back to his corner. Teddy, do you ever have to calm a guy down after he scored a knockdown? That's a really great point because a lot of times that can be the turning point, but not for your guy that scored the knockdown, for the other guy. Because sometimes when you score a knockdown, you start to think it's going to be an easy night. And you this guys, fight it's over. is oh, over. Oh, they stopped because of the cut. Sugar Ray Leonard turned himself a TKO win. The ref steps in and stops it. Sugar Ray Leonard is your winner by TKO. Teddy, another impressive performance by him. In every way, defensively, offensively, and finishing up. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Always enjoy you tuning in. We'll see you next time at the fights.
go Ali. Who can we go against? I don't want to go against Tyson again. Uh, James Tooney's 85. Let's try Lewis. I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to a sold-out boardwalk. When you get a fight like this that Let's everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. What a challenge for Muhammad Ali here tonight as he faces Lennox Lewis. Now, Muhammad Ali has faced big fighters before, but in Lennox Lewis, he's facing a big man who has the complete package. I don't know if he has the complete package. I don't know that he has, anyone has the package when you bring it to the dimensions of mentality that Ali has, that he can deal with that kind of constitution. And of course, Ali has the better chin than Lewis, but the bigger man, no doubt, is Lewis. Ali wants to stay on the outside and more importantly, use his legs to keep the bigger man from being set, from using maybe the only thing that he has an advantage, and that's pure size and power. Here. Unbelievable. I feel like I'm at a fancy restaurant and we've already had four courses and the chef came out and said, hey, don't be full yet. You got eight more to go. And a sharp counter punch by Ali. Halfway through round number one. Took a shot. Now he gives a left. Well, something's got to stick. He sends the combination to the body. Parries that punch intended for the head. How is this strategy of employing the jab time and time again going to pay off for him? Well, it's going to be kind of like, you know, when you put your kids to sleep, you know? You get a little peace and quiet. <laughs> He's going to be left alone. He's not going to be bothered. He's not going to have a headache if he uses his jab. It's been a recent trend, Teddy, where we've seen in the heavyweight division a lot of Eastern Europeans dominating. Why do you think that is? Same thing in basketball. I don't think they're the better athletes, but you know what? There's an urgency. There's a real hunger. This is their opportunity. The fighters over here and the basketball players for that part, they have too many options here. Over there, they make the most of it, and fundamentally, they're very sound. Ooh. Unable to get to Ali. Ali blocked it. <laughs> Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. <laughs> Lennox Lewis is swelling is exactly what his opponent wanted to see. Muhammad Ali's defensive flaws in that last round were very, very costly. He's not doing a good enough job of simply protecting himself. No, I'm not sure that he knows how. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. Good block by Lennox. Good block there by oh. Lewis. Teddy, in any way, can Lennox Lewis be considered predictable with looking for that jab, setting up the right hand? Yeah, he can be a little bit, but with that long jab, kind of like a pitch in baseball, you know, you can take speed off it. You can hit the corners a little bit. He can change that jab. 
three quarter jab instead of a full jab, half jab. Oh, oh and there you straight go. right. Ali stunned and staggered. Targeting that midsection now with the combo. He was stunned and staggered moments ago. Now he's right back in the fight looking pretty good. Yeah, some guys take a little longer to recover. One of his strengths is he recovers real fast. Halfway through round number two. Two punch combo by Lewis. He's committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. Seconds to go here in the second round. Well, we're watching Lennox Lewis here tonight, but Teddy, you know, a lot of American fight fans, sometimes they turn the other way with Lennox Lewis. They never really got behind him because they don't like the way he acts as a heavyweight champion. Well, Americans want you to wear your heart out on your sleeve to a certain point. They like emotion. They love emotion. And Lewis... <laughs> doesn't show that kind of passion. He's very contained, very cerebral, but he knows how to get results where it counts, in the ring. Very clean offense from defense by Ali. How is he taking these kind of shots and just dismissing them? What a chin on this guy. Yeah, well, what a neck on him. Look at that neck. I mean, it's about 19 inches. That is the shock absorber. But the rest of it is he's seeing it. He has good vision. He sees the shots coming, and he's making up his mind. They're not taking him anywhere. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. Good block by Lennox. And a good counter by Ali. That was not well targeted by Lewis. Back and forth exchange. Lewis is doing a really nice job here. I mean, putting his punches together. This is what you're supposed to look like as an offensive fighter. Yes, it is. Oh, and there you go. Lennox Lewis is in a bad spot right now. He's been stunned. Obviously, so many career highlights in the career of Lennox Lewis as we watch him in action here tonight. But one of the things he's most proud of is that he was able to face and beat all the heavyweights of his generation, including getting Mike Tyson at the end of Mike Tyson being Mike Tyson. You know, you use the word proud, and I think that that's so important here. We look at the right hand of Lennox. We look at the size of Lennox, but the pride, that legacy you talked about, he brings that into the ring. That makes him strong. Clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Lennox Lewis. Well placed, well timed combo up top. Lennox able to block that punch. 
Very clever move there. Little defense turns to offense. The counter punch by Ali. Last 10 seconds of round number three. Muhammad Ali is going with a very efficient work rate in that last round. He chose his spots carefully, Teddy. Yeah, that's what I like to see, and that's what the judges are supposed to be looking for. You know, not just being overtaken by a guy just going out there like a mad hatter and just throwing punches, but placing the punches, strategically putting them in the right spots. Good job. blocks a punch. Teddy, you know what I'm so impressed by? Obviously, the pace of this fight is just ridiculous. But how hungry these guys are. How badly each guy wants it. So this is the kind of fight that it has nothing to do about money. It has everything to do about legacy. How they're going to be remembered. A striking combination by Lewis. Committed to the combination punching now. It's working out well up top. Lennox able to block that punch. Muhammad Ali's got a bad cut now that's opened up on his cheek. Teddy, throughout his career, Ali has always been surrounded by many very familiar faces in his entourage. Yeah, it makes him feel comfortable. And, you know, I'm not going to be derogatory about it, but to be quite frank, he has the kind of personality where... You know, he wants to be the boss. You know, he wants to be the guy that stands out in the room. So he has guys around him that allow him to stand out in that room. Oh! Lewis is stunned, and he is hurt. Muhammad Ali is mounting a comeback here, Teddy. Thinks we're going against him. Now the time is turned. Good things come to those who wait or those who persevere. He persevered, good things are happening. He was damaged moments ago, but now he's got his feet back under him. Working his way on the outside and working well, he just stunned his opponent. And his opponent got caught wide because he was standing in front not doing nothing. If you're not going to work, get out of range. Don't let your opponent work. Nothing there on the punch by Lewis. Lennox Lewis is in a position now where he should be able to bring home a win. If things stay the way they are, he's clearly headed towards a win. Yeah, I have my head on my scorecard, but he has to make sure he doesn't like in football go into that three fat defense. If he starts just moving, just staying away a little bit, now the things that were keeping his opponent from coming in that front door, well, guess what? They're not there no more. His opponent could get back into this fight. Teddy, this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say, tune in. Everybody should be watching this, right? I have a cell phone. I might do that right now. <laughs> Start dialing. What an excellent two-punch combo by Lewis. Muhammad Ali is down on your scorecard. I snuck a peek at your scorecard. He's down on your scorecard. But... It's still a close and competitive fight, a fight that he's very much alive in. Yeah, he is, but he's got to go about it like the fight is up for grabs. He can't start saying, hey, you know, I think I'm a little bit ahead, because that's a good way of getting yourself disappointed in anything in life. He better still go after it. Smart, but go after it. There's the combo to the body. Lennox Lewis's trainers are doing a good job, aren't they, Teddy? Carroll was rocked, but now look at him. Yeah, they're giving him the right advice. You know, they've made a little strategic change here, a little bit of an adjustment. That's what you like to see. Not just the fighter thinking, but the corner, the support team thinking. Lennox Lewis blocks that punch. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Muhammad Ali's opponent is having a field day here. I mean, just so accurate upstairs. But there's one reason he's so accurate. He's not moving his head. No, he's not at all. And if he's not going to move his head, at least do something else. Catch and pitch. What I mean by that, Joe, is block and then pitch right back. Keep your opponent honest. He's not doing that either.
dismiss it. Nice two-punch combo by Ali. Muhammad Ali's hawks is not going to the body at all. He'd be so well served to do it, though, Teddy. Yeah, but his opponent doesn't want him to. So, you know, he doesn't want to go against his opponent doesn't want him to, do Because his opponent would love to keep throwing to the head because, you know, he can see those coming. He can move and avoid them. Body shots, you know, your head moves, but your body doesn't. Nice strike after catching one by Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali is not having the fight he wants to have right now. I know that he's a guy that likes to stay on the outside, but right now it's not getting it done, Teddy. An adjustment needs to be made. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what the adjustment has to be. He better start moving those feet. You know, get range, get separation. You see the accuracy now with that double jab up top. On the mark, the counter punch by Ali. Lewis's eye to me is getting worse as things continue on here. Teddy, he's got to be very conscious of that, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, and his corner has to be, too. They got to be thinking about if it gets to the point where he can't defend himself, they have to do something. Obviously, they didn't come here thinking they were going to have to do. Stop this fight. We got to do something here we got to do something here we big, are guys. getting ready for the second half of this fight as we've reached oh. the sixth round able to dismiss that body shot well this is exactly where lennox lewis wants to be just doing a really nice job on the outside Teddy, he's having a field day. He's peppering him with shots from the outside. Well, when did we all of a sudden show up at a bull ring? Because I'm watching a matador right now control that bull and not letting that bull get near where he can gore him. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Ali's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. Oh, early on here in the round, and he's already down. Needed. And he doesn't look good at all. Oh, oh but too much stamina. One, two, three, seven, eight, six. Lewis goes down Lewis and now tough. rising to oh. his feet. Now he can only hope that he can survive, get back to his corner, and get information he needs. Information that will tell him why he was put on the floor. <laughs> Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. Eddie, there are opportunities that are here for him, aren't there? Yeah, counterpunch opportunities because he's got an opponent who's walking in a little bit. Now he has a chance to start to chuck something back at him a little. Wow. There we go. And Stop he again. goes down for a second time. Does he have enough this time to rise up and continue on? This may be a worst-case scenario for oh, Lennox boy, Lewis. He rises up to beat the count, but you know that chin is a question mark. Well, you know he's good at delivering. Now he's got to show that he can survive. That's what we needed. Oh! Oof. Lennox Lewis is down! Muhammad Ali with a comeback. <laughs> Said he's done. Is it this fight is over. This fight is over. Muhammad Ali's got the win by way of knockout. He put his man down, and the 10 count was administered. Muhammad Ali, right, guys. So that's it for this knockout, one. Teddy. Fight well, night round four. Let me know if you think this is still better than uh, 
we undisputed. Um, I still got to play some more undisputed. I got to play undisputed online, too. Maybe that'll be one of my next we'll videos. We'll see you next time Catch at the fights. Guys.